as a timid five-year-old, I stood pigeon-toed and with a reverence so fierce and fearful that I nearly trembled. Grandpa sat beside me in his huge wheelchair at the head of his driveway. This was the exact same spot, shady spot, he asked to be parked in every single day of every long, hot, and humid New Jersey summer. Stretching out above it, above us were these impossibly huge trees, and my intellectual grandfather pointed them out using labels. Maple and oak. He sent me to retrieve a leaf sample of each. Maple leaves are like your hand with five parts, and oak leaves, do you see, have longer, narrow shape with ruffled edges like the dress you wore to your uncle's wedding. In those summer seasons, trees became nameable and identifiable. And every childhood drawing that I used to make had trees in it, ripe with fruit or leaves. We had a small stand of trees on a corner of the lot on which I grew up. And for some reason, we called them the bushes. It was an amazing nature place in a neighborhood barely dotted with trees but filled with overdry lawns and straight strips of sidewalk and asphalt streets turning everything into right angles. There was an entry into our private grove through which I could slip my soil and solitude craving body and I'd lie down on a branch or I'd bounce on a limb or I'd simply crouch, concealed. It was my secret, very safe place, and I had a spy hole out on the world through the negative space in the leaves. In those spring and autumn seasons, trees became a haven. Every time I sought refuge or retreat, trees have been at the center of my experience. Beginning in late elementary school, I went to church camps in the mountains several hours away from where I lived. These areas were alive with huge ponderosa pines, thousands of them, that whispered and whistled in the wind, and which, when warmed with the sun's heat, bore a sweet scent strong enough to taste. It was not the doctrine or songs, but rather the sanctity of sound and light and scent and, you know, those stippy, sticky sap fingers that kept me coming back. In those winter and summer seasons, trees became holy, utterly sacred. And every time I cradle a handmade basket in my travels abroad, trees have been noted as the source of inspiration. During graduate school, I studied other people's relationships to natural landscapes. Cloud forests in Costa Rica and Rwanda were designated protected areas, and restrictions to access were imposed on local communities accustomed to using those natural resources. Living fences of trees in rural agricultural areas in countless counties abroad started rising up. Local artisans learned to sew and paint, draw, and etch images of trees and other flora and fauna as craft pieces or keepsakes to give to visitors in the conserved lands around them. In those upside down seasons in other hemispheres, trees became livelihoods, areas of contention, conserved, <laughs> conserved treasures. Every time I talk for more than a few minutes with anybody, my arms begin to branch out for <laughs> animation, and my feet root in the earth for sustenance, and my, ugh, my skin becomes furrowed with age, and I realize I am very tree-like. <laughs> <laughs> we moved back here to my beloved Pacific Northwest several months ago in the bare-limbed winter. Three days ago, I was driving the back roads near home when suddenly I was flooded with an emotion that chose to lodge itself in my throat. Here was this 
overcast, warm spring day, and I'm traversing a narrow lime green quarter of ripe leaves, and this memory rises up thick and palpable. My beloved uncle is driving me through the thick New Jersey summer from Newark Airport to his and my grandfather's home in Mountainside. Raindrops begin to pelt the windshield, and my little girl self marvels at the lightning and thunder, humidity that soaks and awakens me at night, and green forests that seem impossibly heavenly compared with my cement Southern California upbringing. So I scoop closer to my uncle on the seat, wrapping my tiny hand around his fingers. In this season of middle age, I realize how much trees are my passion and my pathway to cherish memories, my spiritual life. We are the wide stalwart bristle cone, ancient ones hidden in secret groves and obscure mountain ways of California. We are elms, we are oaks, and New England maples flowing sugar through our veins in spring. We are teak and banana trees from the tropics. We are the capoc of Africa, the yew of Europe, the bamboo of Asia. Two, we are the eucalyptus of Australia <laughs> and the rubber tree of South America, and we are the fossilized impressions of a possible trees from early Triassic times in Antarctica. Blessed are we, the lover of trees, we, the community of humans who celebrate Arbor Day. For we feel in trees the resonance of ourselves, the mirror that reminds us of how we are rooted and strong, vulnerable in the face of change. But we are resilient always, especially when we remember our inextricable interconnection with trees, with all non-human living beings. When we re-remember this connection, we re-remember our seasons and our own splendor.